Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we are going to make a sun hat and uh, this is I would consider an easy pattern and you're going to notice that the brim looks a little unusual here and I'm going to be showing you a little bit of a sample here that I've done. This is like a one evening uh, hat. It's awesome and we're also gonna be using the Lily Sugar and Cream. You need two of these little balls in order to make this whole hat. So you're gonna use one and three quarters of this ball. One thing I would uh, cautionly, uh, caution you on is use the gauge as your gauge. Six uh, uh, DC and eight rows. Now we do have tutorials available on how to gauge here on the YouTube channel if you wish to do that. It's important for this because cotton once it stretches it, it's permanent. So if this is uh, too big for you uh, as you're making it then it's always gonna be too big for you. So it will never come back to a regular size. The, so what you have to do is you have to pay attention to your gauge so that it fits you and obviously it's a sun hat so you don't want it like form fitting you as well. So you want it to be nice and uh, and comfortable as you're wearing it. So for myself is that it required a 3.75 millimeter crochet hook but because of my gauge and the way that I crochet I substituted and went down to three and a half uh, millimeters a size um, uh, E or F and uh, you want to just uh, concentrate on that in order to make that happen. So let me show you the sample. Let me show you what you're gonna get into. This is a pretty easy pattern and it's just a matter of just doing the work. So here's the top of the hat. You're going to notice um, you will see a little bit of a seam line as you're uh, going throughout your rounds in order to do it. Not a really a big deal because at the brim you're gonna notice is that there is spaces. So you see that in the model and you're thinking okay that's kind of unusual but it's actually doing it because it's like a pie shape that's growing and it creates that ruffle effect so that it will open up and uh, stay uh, on front of you, in front of you. So what you want to do is that you may want to consider starching this after you get it done to hold the brim into position if you want to. Uh, again that's up to you. Um, I did take a photo of Daniel wearing it and uh, it does stay up but I guess over time it may just flop down in front of your face. So um, consider maybe just starching it, giving it a little bit of shape which would not be unusual for hats. So you can see it's pretty easy. One thing I really did like is the attention to the brim area right here. Again not very hard to do and it was really easy to maintain the counts too. So without further ado, let's grab our Lily Sugar and Cream. Let's grab your hook size. It should be around a 3.75 millimeter. In my case, three and a half and uh, we should be good to go. So let's get this hat started. So let's get our top of our hat started. It has a really tight top finish and then it will loosen up to do the double crochet. So it does a nice top uh, for you. So you're going to just start off with the slip uh, knot on your hook and you're going to chain two. So one and two. And in the second chain from the hook I want you to place five single crochets so it goes in a circle. So just going into the second chain from the hook and just count these out together. So one and two and go right up over top of this loose end. So this will be three, four and five. Now you wanna slip stitch to the first one of the five. If you're not sure just count it backwards. So one, two, three, four and five. And you want to go to the first single crochet that you started with which is the fifth away and just slip stitch it so that it forms a ring. Now if you went over top of this starting strand like I just did you can safely just trim that now and get that out of your way and you'll never have to worry about that again. So let's move on now to round number two. Okay round number two we're going to just chain up one and in the same one that you did the join I want you to put two single crochets into that one. So one and two and then in the next stitch also put two. So I want you to put two single crochets in every stitch going around. There's only five stitches to worry about so that gives you a total count of ten stitches at the end. I'll meet you at the end of this round. Please do that now. So as you're coming all the way around I got my five. Now you're gonna think that that's a stitch. It's not. It's part of the original uh, starting. So you should be able to count five uh, sets of two. So one, two, three, four and five. So one, two, three, four and five. So just immediately go to the first one of the group of five and just slip stitch it and you'll see that pulls it everything nice and tight together just like that. So let's move along now to round number three. Round number three is identical round so you're just gonna chain up one and then in the same one you did the join put in two single crochets. So one and two and now the next stitch is also two. So you're gonna put two single crochets in every stitch going around and you'll do that then for this round. So I'll see you at the end of this one. 
So I'm coming up to the end of this round and there's two single crochets in each. Once you get all the way around again this one that leans over is part of the original and you can be able to count those out too to make sure that you got the right counts but just slip stitch then when you're ready to the first one and that is your finish. So let's uh, move along now to round number four. So round number four we're gonna move now to double crochet for the majority of the rest of this hat. So you're going to chain up three. So one, two, three and you wanna double crochet in the same one that you did the join. So here's the repeat pattern then for the rema remaining of this round. The next one is gonna be one double crochet by itself. Okay, so to continue the pattern the next one is gonna be two double crochets into the same one. And then the next one is one by itself. So please do that same pattern going all the way around for round number four. So I'm coming up to the end of round number four. The very final stitch should just be one double crochet by itself. Now that's not doing anything special. It's just a matter of keeping the count. So there was two and then one because the original one that you started there's two into the same one. So whenever we finish these rounds when you're doing this the very last stitch should just be the one individuals by itself. It should never be two because we're always gonna start with two in the very beginning of a round. Please just join this now to the top of the first one. Now I'm gonna give you a tip here. So if you would like a tip, it, see how you got a gapping space? You can get rid of that. This is not technically a rule or anything but what you can do in the very last stitch here. So let's just say we're gonna do that. So if you would like to get rid of that, see there, that there's two. This one here is not a stitch. It's just leaning over. So if you treat the first one and just uh, loop and pull through but don't finish it and go into this section that it's technically not a stitch and just loop and pull through. You put those two together as one and when you go to slip stitch then at the top it's completely gone. Mm -hmm. Isn't that cool? So you can do that for this whole uh, particular hat if you would like to get rid of the stitch line that exists on the top of this hat. So th the way that you did it is that it's still the right stitch count is just two became one and one was technically in a stitch that was just covering a gap area. So let's move on to round number five. So round number five we're gonna get progressively bigger so just chain up three and in the same one of the join I want you to put another one in there. So you got your two to start and then the next two stitches will be one double crochet by itself. So one and two. Okay, so here's the repeat pattern then for round number five. The next one has two double crochets in it and then the next two are by themselves. So I want you to do that all the way around for round number five and you can finish it off in the same way now that I've already done it once. I'm just doing that cheating technique to get rid of that stitch line. That's up to you and I'll leave that to your discretion. So please do this and I'll see you at the end of this round. So I'm coming to the end of round number five. So the last two are by themselves and so this is just one and then remember I can show you the cheating technique again. So just wrap going into the first one, pull through pull through two and then wrap again and go into the stitch that's technically not a stitch at all and just it's just filling in the gap and just wrap pull through pull through two and then pull through all three loops and then that'll close in that gapping space and then join it to the top of the first chain three. See no more no more gapping. So let's move along to now round number six. Chain up three one two three and then I want you to put in another double crochet right into the join the one that you did the join with and now the next three in a row will each be one double crochet. So one, two and three. I think I got up my hands on some fiber there. No big deal. Just when in doubt pull out right. Okay, so here's the repeat pattern once again is that you're gonna have two into the same one. So one, <laughs> now I'm losing confidence in myself. So two into the same one and then one double crochet into each of the next three. So one, two and three. So please do that all the way around in that same pattern for round number six. 
and finishing up round number six I just put two into there the last three are by themselves. You can still do that cheating technique on the very final stitch. So this is the second one of three and then the next one is the third. So I just can go in. I've definitely lost confidence in myself. <laughs> so I'm gonna pull through and then I'm gonna go into this non-stitch pull through and then pull through all three loops and then close it. So that's the end of round number six. Again see a nice closed look. So now we're gonna move on to round number seven. So chain up three and another double crochet in the same one as you did the join. So now round number seven is now just ex uh, going a little bit longer. So it's gonna be four double crochets by itself. So one, two, three, and four and then the next one has two in the same one. So one and two. So okay so that's your repeat pattern. So two into the same one and then four and then two into the same one and then four and do that all the way around for round number seven. So finishing up round number seven there's four in the end that sit by itself and the very final one you can do your little cheating technique if you wish to bring that together to get rid of that slip stitch or to get, yeah, to get rid of the slip stitch line. So that was round number seven. So let's move along now to round number eight. Eight is chain up three and double crochet into the same one. And now this time there's gonna be five in a row that's by itself and then two. Five and then two. Please do that all the way around for round number seven. Or sorry, for round number eight. Okay, five and then two. Five and then two. Okay, I'm finishing up the final on round number eight. There's five in the end that are by themselves. And again you can use that cheating technique if you wish. And that will get rid of your slip stitching line. So let's uh, continue then to round number nine. Round number nine chaining up three again and then one double crochet in the same one as the join and round number nine there is going to be six double crochets by itself and then two, six and then two. Please do that all the way around for round number nine. I'm finishing up round number nine and just getting my six that are by themselves at the very end and again you can use that cheating technique to finish. And then just slip stitch it then to the beginning. So now what you can do is now round number ten. Round number ten is that we're going to change gears a little bit. We just need to grow it a little bit more. Now you're gonna put it on your head and you're gonna think it's too small. You need to give this thing a chance in order to get to the right size because if you are going to adjust right now you probably regret it later. So just stick with the pattern and let's move on to round number ten. So round number ten we are going to just make an adjustment and it's not going to be a regular consistent uh, it's like just like seven and two, seven and two. So this time we're going to then chain up three and you're going to double crochet in the same one and what I need you to do is that I need you to do fifteen double crochets by itself and then two. Fifteen and two and you keep doing that all the way around. Okay, so you will end up back into the very beginning. So it's, you got two in there and then fifteen. Two and fifteen. Please do that for round number ten. I'm coming around the end of round number ten and there is fifteen at the very end and you can do the same cheating technique for the final two. If you wish. It's up to you and everything is now staying in counts and we're good. So the next four rounds are very easy rounds but what I'm gonna suggest to you is get a spare piece of yarn so then you can just watch TV without having to count and just go into the top of just one of the stitches here and just go back out the other direction and just throw a strand through and that will represent a stitch marker for yourself. So the next four rounds are just one double crochet in each. You can do the cheating technique at the end to bring it to conclusion uh, to get rid of that slip stitching line. So just chain up three and just advance to the next one. So it's just one double crochet in each all the way around and when you come around you can do that cheating technique to join as I mentioned. So uh, I want you to do four rounds. So rounds number 11 through 14 of just one double crochet each and then we're gonna start the brim area at the forehead area and we're gonna then move along to doing the actual visor or the brim area as well after that. So please do four rounds of this and I'll see you at the end of that. Okay last time I left you we had four rounds so I, I told you where to put the stitch marker so you can see one, two, three and four so now you can pull that out. 
So now what we want to do is that we want to do that nice cross stitch area that is made in the in the brim area that you can see in the model. So, so I want you to chain three. So one, two, three and that's gonna stand by itself and I want you to skip the next two and go to the third and double crochet. Then I want you to chain one and I want you to skip back to the second one back. So not this one but the second one and I want you to just lean the project forward and just get into that, that stitch and just double crochet. So that is called the cross double crochet made in the pattern. So to do the next one you're going to skip to the third one. So this is where the last one is. So one, two and three. So go to the third and double crochet, chain one and then just skip to the first one of the group of three. Just lean the project forward and double crochet. I'll show you one more time. Okay, so you're going to go and so this is where the last one is sitting. So one, two and three, double crochet over, chain one and then double crochet the second one back. So it's the first one of the group of three. Please do that all the way around for this round for round number 15. So I'm coming up to the end of round number 15. I'm still doing my crisscrossing and I will end up using the last stitch in the crisscross and then you just wanna join the top of the first one to the um, chain three. Okay, so that's the only one, the chain three that looks like it may be out of place um, but it works out for the whole counts of this pattern. So let's move along now to round number 16, an easy round. So we're going to chain up one and you're going to do a single crochet in each one of the stitches. Now here's the thing, in the top of the crisscross you can do your single crochet but don't forget that chain one space in between the crisscrossing is a stitch. So just go right in between the two crisscrosses and single crochet and then go into the other one that's crisscrossing. So the single crochet space, okay the chain one space is only in between. So it's not in between two groups, it's right in between the two criss, uh, the crisscross itself. So in the top of the one go into the space in between the crisscross and then in the top of the next. Okay, top of the next one and then into the space and then top of the next one. Please do that all the way around. So single crochet. Okay, when you get all the way back around you single crochet in the last one that's crossing over and then you just immediately slip stitch. So you're not gonna do any of that special technique that I had been showing earlier. So let's move along now and we're gonna start creating the brim and the, the, we've already got it kind of established but now we're really gonna start doing it. So round number 17, it's a really easy pattern to be, re, to be able to remember. So here we go. So we're gonna chain up three and the next two in a row will each be a double crochet. So one, and two. Then the next one is three double crochets into the same one. So one, two and three. And the next three is just one double crochet by itself. So that is a section of the brim. Now that's one section so you're gonna chain one, skip one and now you're gonna do the next section. So you're going to do three double crochets in a row. So one, two and three and then the next one is gonna be three double crochets into the same one. So one, so pardon me on that one. This is two and three and then the next three are by themselves and then that will complete the next section of the brim. And when you're done that, you're gonna chain one, skip one and then do three by themselves, three into the same, three by themselves and then chain one, skip one and you're gonna end up with these little pod sections just like you see here. So let's uh, continue to do that all the way around. So I'm gonna give you some advice. I've got the last section here but it seems like I'm missing a few stitches. So I could either frog my work or I can fake it. So I'm gonna tell you to fake it. So we remember we have three by themselves, three together and three by themselves which gives you a total count of nine. So as long as I get nine stitches here that looks pretty close to the original then I will be in balance for the remaining of the brim that is going on. So sometimes that happens, sometimes you can skip a stitch. So I have two in there right now. I've got three 
Okay, so I need to get six more. So this is gonna be the middle one. So let's do four, five, and six. Okay, and then I still need to get three more stitches in. So one and two. And I still have to get one more stitch in, but this is the end. So I'm gonna throw another one in there. There's your final. Then chain one and then join to the top of the first chain three. This is completely cheating. But you know what? Sometimes you put a lot of work into it and it will balance out then as you're working on this in the future. So this is would be how you make it or fake it, right? So let's move along now to round number 18. Round number 18. So one, two, three. So the middle one of the grouping of three, okay, and this one because we faked it we just have to keep our counts, is that there's gonna be four in a row that are all just double crochet. So this chain three equals a double crochet. So just go like two, three and four and that should take you to the middle one of the grouping of three. So what I would do and what I did do is that I look for the middle one of the three and then that's where I put in my three double crochets into it. So you can either count it or you can just use your eyes and just show you uh, just see where you need to go. So there should be four left on the other side of that middle. So one, two, three, and four and once you get the fourth in there chain one, skip this chain one space and immediately double crochet to the next one. So just double crochet into that one all the way to the middle. So there's four in a row and then do your um, the one in the middle, three double crochets and then the four down the other side. So when you get back around just watch this last one if you faked it like I did and then uh, I will see there and we'll just make sure we get that done together. So I'm coming up to the last section and remember we kind of faked it. So I wanna make sure I'm keeping my counts. So I've got one, two, because you can't obviously tell um, by looking at it because you've uh, flubbed it a little bit. So you got four that are sitting by itself and because you got your nine in there before the fifth one is gonna be your th uh, three into the same one. And then you got four then remaining left over. So you see how you can fake it and just kind of fix your way through it. That's part of crafting, right? You gotta just figure out your own way. Sometimes it just doesn't work out and there's just things that happen in life. So then chain one and then join to the beginning. So you got one more round of doing it like this. Okay, so you can see all the different sections. So what you wanna do is chain up three again and you wanna work your way across and in the middle one of the grouping of three, you're going to put in three more double crochets. So this is the last time you're gonna be doing it like this. So this technically will have you five double crochets before you hit the middle and there's the middle one which is next and yours gonna be three double crochet there. One, two, and three just like you see and now you're gonna do five then before you hit the next gap. So one, two, three, four, and five. And then you're gonna jump over. So chain one, skip one, the space and then just go into the next one and work your way all the way around. So just double crochet until you hit to the middle one, put three in there and then to five then remaining and then jump again. Please do this all the way around for round number seven. Oh sorry, round number 19. <laughs> sorry about that. Okay, I'm finishing up round number 20. So round number 20 I'm just chaining up one and then just going and just jumping over. So now the next two rounds are really quite simple. This next round is just chain one and we're gonna single crochet into each one of the stitches going all the way around. In the gapping space just throw in one single crochet right into the space itself and continue to go all the way around. So please single crochet all the way around for round number 21, uh, sorry, round number 21. So I'm coming up all the way around. I single crocheted in the final gap and then I'm just going to join to the beginning. So final round, here we go. We're gonna do a reverse single crochet. It's also known as a crab stitch. So you're gonna chain up one and then you're gonna go into the same one and you're gonna yarn over and pull through and then pull through two. And now we're gonna go in the direction from which we came. So we go into the stitch right before it. So going in, yarning over, pulling it through and then pull through two. 
So go into the one before it and it creates a beautiful finishing of the hat. So just in, it's called the reverse single crochet. It takes a bit of getting used to if you've never done it before and you end up with this kind of a rope like finish at the end of your work. I've, I've seen this done on many many blankets and clothing and etc. and it's just a really great way to finish and that's what it looks like in the very end. So please do a reverse single crochet in each stitch going all the way around and then join me back here in just a moment. So I've now just come all the way back around and I'm just going to go into the very first stitch that I had started with still doing my reverse single crochet and in order to really finish this out properly you need a dar darning needle. So just cut an extra long tail here so that you can put it into a darning needle and just pull this out. You know any kind of uh, project I always do the same concept because it really is permanent when you use a darning needle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn it over to the underside of the hat and I am just going to just glide So I'm gonna catch, I'm gonna capture the next one. Okay, so I'm gonna just do it from the back side. Gonna capture the next one and then just go back into the direction from which I just came and stay on the underside. If you can see the needle on the front side of this then you know you've gone too deep. So just gonna catch it and now you're gonna go back in the other direction through a slightly different path so that it catches in. A project can never stretch uh, three directions when you're going in a horizontal like this. So that's why it's completely permanent. And then go back one more time across and then that's it. So you can safely now cut this right down into the project itself and you'll never see that ever again. So that's the end of the story. So this is how you do this hat. Let me just back up the video and let me just show you what it looks like. So here's my new sun hat and uh, I just have to try it on. I haven't done so yet so it hasn't really stretched to the head yet. Um, but it's actually pretty neat. Uh, you can go in the in inside and see it and it looks really awesome. So let's check, take a look at that slip stitching line. So you can see that. Now if you look at the original uh, of the, my test sample that he did to make sure I understood the pattern you can see the difference of that slip stitching line. See the difference? So you have to decide what you like better, more closed or open. And again, that's just the nature of crochet. So now I got two fun sun hats. Uh, obviously these are for women and I can probably give these away as a gift now. So I'll put them in my studio. So until next time, it's Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. Enjoy your new sun hats. We'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.